Hello once again, and in this video we're going to have a look at getting the transmitter to read things out to you, to speak them to you. Um, we'll be using a telemetry sensor, and in this example I'm going to be using the milliamp hours on the main electric battery uh, for the, the motor on a model, but you can set these for whatever value your telemetry is sending you. And we're going to have a look at um, forcing it to read a value to you by flicking a switch or the system reading to you when the value crosses a particular uh, setting for you or getting it to read out the value at a regular time interval. So let's dive straight and let's have a look. We go into timers and sensors, voice output, down here, telemetry. You can set repeat and trigger switches. What are they? Well, if you go into sensors and variables, it lists the uh, parameters you've got from your telemetry and whether you want it to be triggered on a repeat switch or triggered by the trigger switch. And you can have both if you want. And the priority. Priority determines the sequence that it speaks them to you if you've got several of them switched on. Yeah. So let's have a quick look back at that. Repeat switch. Repeat switch means if the switch is on, it will just keep repeating it every whatever. It defaults, I think, to 30 seconds for the sake of this demonstration, so we're not waiting around too long. Let's set it to a nice low value of uh, 6 seconds. And what switch do you want? You can set it to any physical switch you want, or as usual, you can set it to all sorts of things. If I clear it out for the moment and show you, what I'm going to use is the timer, the flight timer. There we are. Um, and I'll demonstrate that nothing happens until I start the timer. Then every few seconds, it's going to read out the milliamp hours for us. But you set it to whatever you want. You'd think a timer switch would have, you know, seconds or minutes, whatever. No, it just has this type of proportional screen. You can't change it, can't do anything with it. Anyway. It defaults to being at zero and the switch on uh, about zero percent. As soon as I start the timer, it'll cross the threshold and TO1 will switch on. And therefore, pardon me, uh, the repeat switch will switch on and every six seconds it will go. Trigger switch. I set it to my three position switch down here. Very handy switch this. It's center sprung. So you can pull it towards Capacity, you. Capacity, zero goes, milliamp hours. Or Current. Push it away from you, and it comes back to the middle. Um, so I've got it pulled towards me there. So we've got repeat switch and trigger switch are set. Let's go back into sensors and variables. What I'm after really for this demonstration is capacity. So if I press the programming dial, here I can just toggle them on and off. See that? So I'll set capacity to the repeat switch. That's the one that once I start the timer, it's going to be talking to me every so many seconds. In the trigger switch, which is when I pull the switch towards me, I've set both capacity and current. And it knows which way to read them out to me because I've set capacity to high and current to medium. So it will tell me that one first, then that one. Just because you've got three priorities doesn't mean you're limited to three items. Uh, you can have many items as you want. Say OK to that. One more thing, single voice announcements, exactly what it says. I use my three position switch away from me. See, it switches on. And again, I've chosen from the sensors the quality. Uh, so I turn it up a bit. Signal 100%. find this very handy when I'm flying a, a big glider at long range or one of my jet models, which is full of metal and carbon and things, just to know what's going on. So we've set a switch that will speak to us the values when we pull it. We've set a switch which will repeat the values at regular time intervals. And the other one was when it crosses a certain number. So we go into alarms and I can choose to add an alarm. I've chosen my sensor, the MUI capacity, enabled it, come down and set the condition. The condition will be when x is greater than some number, 
which will be relevant to the sensory I've chosen. Again, to save time on the video, I've chosen a ridiculously small number so I can just run the motor at idle and we'll be quickly through this at 3 milliamp hours. So when X is greater than 3 milliamp hours, in other words, when X is 4 milliamp hours, what will it do? Well, it'll switch on, but I've not given it a voice file to read because I don't have a 4 milliamp hour voice file. No activation switch. I don't want it to repeat. This is what I want it to do. Announce the value by voice. So, when it gets to 4 milliamp hours, it will say 4 milliamp hours. Don't know to set throttle to idle, and I don't want to use this during the pre-flight check. Okay, and as you can see, I've done exactly the same for a 6 milliamp hour. So, you might want it to be, you know, every 500 milliamp hours, or every 1000 milliamp hours, or uh, what, whatever it is you want from your telemetry. Let's say okay to that. Come out of there. Right, we're ready to run. Here's the capacity used for the moment. So, speaking by flicking a switch. Signal 100%. Capacity 0 milliamp hours. Current mm. 0 amps. Now, I'm hoping that the um, noise of the prop wash and motor won't be too troublesome. The model's chalked. So, throttle log off. Let's give it a little bit of throttle, and remember when we get to four and I think seven, it should speak to us. Four milliamp hours. Seven milliamp hours. And the other one was that it'll read out to us every few seconds when the, once the timer is running. So we'll start the timer. Capacity, 8 milliamp hours. Capacity, 8 milliamp hours. And I'll give it just a little bit of throttle so we can hear the difference. Capacity, 8 milliamp hours. Capacity, 10 milliamp hours. Throttle off, throttle lock active. So, there you are, how to get uh, voice announcements out of your jetty in all sorts of different manners.